All right, let's record this. So now we are discussing chapter one assessment, your quizzes tutorial. It runs sampai question number four. Identify the type of changes when sweat evaporates from your body after you exercise. Hello? Meruap. Okay, hello, meruap selepas kamu bersenam. So ini adalah sejenis physical change. Okay, hello tu asalnya adalah liquid tapi bila dia meruap, dia jadi dalam bentuk wap. Tapi dia masih lagi, it's made up of H2O. Okay, the salt is still dissolved in that H2O. Uh, number five, uh, this is measurement punya subtopic. 760 millimeter of mercury is equal to what? So half of you got it right, the other half got it wrong. Tapi most, uh, uh, is, uh, nine participants most part them. So how to answer this question? So to answer this question, dalam whatever conversion calculation, you have to know the conversion factor. So what is a conversion factor? Saya ada attach uh, uh, this uh, factor dalam lecture note. Tapi just to be, saya akan tunjuk kat sini, uh, nama 1 ppm 2 mm hd. So 1 atm equals to how many mm hd? Millimeter of mercury. MMHG itu adalah unit untuk kita ukur tekanan. Okay, so ada banyak unit untuk ukur tekanan. Ada ATM, atmospheric pressure, ada PA iaitu pascal, sama dengan KPA iaitu kilo pascal. Kita ada TOR, TORR, kita ada MMHG. These are the four units yang kita guna dalam this syllabus untuk measure pressure, untuk ukur tekanan. So kalau soalan ni tanya, soalan ni tanya macam mana nak convert, how many uh, Ada tanya 760mm mercury is equal to which one, kita tanya kat sini, mana satu yang betul So kalau kamu understood the question, kamu boleh google lah macam ni Okay so uh, pressure punya conversion unit, that's easier to conversion unit Able. So you can google like this and then come up and straight up the part the punya This is too complicated <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know that channel because I'm malas nak buka powerpoint, it's slow Okay Alright, so kat sini it's still a bit complicated Ah, this is the easiest Okay uh, M -M mercury, astaga tak ada pula M -M mercury kat sini Millimeter mercury, ah here we go, okay So pressure conversions, so the units of pressure Ada yang saya mention kat sini semua ada ATM, Pascal uh, uh, tall and millimeter of mercury. So, so alam ni tanya uh, 760 mm Hg millimeter mercury is equal to what? Dia bagi empat options kat sini. Satu tall, 760 atm, 760 tall ke, satu satu pascal. So, you can go over. Yes, apa raise hand tadi? Ah, sorry, saya so tekan. Oh, okay. Intan, alright. Uh, where was I? Macam mana nak convert 760mm ni to other units, okay? So 760mm mercury is equal to 1 tor. So you have to eliminate. So you try 760mm, 760mm Hg ni equals to 1 tor ataupun tidak. So 760mm mercury is equals to 1 tor. So in here it says 1 tor equals to 1 millimeter. Mercury. So if we have 760 mmHg, that means uh, the convert alarm tor is also it is also 760. Okay, so that's how we convert the trial one by one. The second one 760 atm. Other 760 mmHg equals to 760 atm. So we look over this. 
760 ATM equals to 760 TOR. And 1 TOR equals to 1 MM HG. Okay, so in here, so in here we know 1 ATM equals to 760 TOR. It is also equals to 101 uh, kilopascal. It is equals to uh, 760 uh, mm hg. Apa lagi Oh, ATM dah ada sini lah. Okay. So, kalau 1 ATM equals to soalan tadi, apa dia kata? 1 ATM equals to uh, 760, sorry, 760 mm is equal to 760 ATM? Jawapannya adalah tidak. Because 1 ATM equals to 760. Eh, dia tak sama. That's not how we convert ATM to millimeter mercury. So, answer option for B adalah salah. And then we have C here, 760 millimeter mercury equals to 760 tor. Is it true? Ah, kalau 1 ATM, here we get the, the, the relationship. Tor dengan MMPG. If 1 ATM equals to 760 tor, and that means it is also equals to 760 mmHg. So that's why jawapannya adalah C. Jawapannya adalah C. Okay, so kalau kamu tak tahu macam nak approach untuk jawab this question, kamu eliminate one by one. Kamu try to convert 760 to uh, TOR, dapat berapa? Kamu try convert uh, 760 mmHg to ATM, dapat berapa? And then sampailah kamu dapat jawapannya betul. You eliminate each option until you are left with one. Okay. Uh, moving on, question number six. A gas is at a pressure of 95 kilopascal kPa. What is the pressure in atmosphere? So you have to convert. Ini ramai jawab betul. You have to convert uh, kilopascal to atm. So how do we do this? So go over to the option kat sini. You need to convert kilopascal to atm. So kita ada 95 Kilo Pascal. So, berapa ini? So, kalau kamu tak tahu macam nak mula, kamu tulis balik the conversion factor. So, 101 kPa equals to uh, 1 ATM. And then, you have, kamu darab silam. Okay? So, kamu tulis uh, 95, oh, 95 kPa divided by x ATM. That's what you want to find. And then kamu samakan dengan 101 kilo pascal divided by 1 ATM. Okay. So this one kita equals to this one number 1, this one number 2. So on this left hand side, ini number 1. On the left hand side, ini number 2. And then kamu selesaikan x ATM ni berapa. So susun X ni bagi dia duduk seorang-seorang on one side. So if you do that, kamu akan dapat X ATM equals to uh, 95 kilo pascal multiplied with 1 ATM divided by 101 kilo pascal. So kalau kamu calculate this, you key this value 95 darab 1 bagi 101, kamu akan dapat the value in ATM. So that's why the answer adalah 0.94 ATM. So I, uh, uh, that's my tip for you lah kalau kamu macam you're a bit uh, macam tak mahir lagi. Kamu tak cakap lagi, nak calculate, nak convert with your head ataupun uh, nak buat cara lain, kamu buat cara kaedah darab silam. Okay, tapi the key thing is kamu kena tahu dia punya conversion factor. Satu ATM sama dengan berapa kilo pascal. You can google that. Okay, that's the advantage of Learning at home lah, kamu boleh Google stuff lah. Uh, next question, mana dia? Okay, 100 degree Celsius equals to what Kelvin? So jawapannya adalah 2, uh, sorry, uh, 373 Kelvin. So untuk temperature, we only have 
two units, yaitu degree, degree Celsius and also Kelvin, degree Kelvin. So kalau kamu nak cari value in Kelvin, kamu just ambil the value of degree Celsius tambah dengan 273. So that's why dalam jawapan eh, dalam soalan ni, uh, if you have 100 degree Celsius, kamu nak convert that to Kelvin, you take 100 degree Celsius, oh sorry, you just you need here, tambah dengan 273, that's why you get 373 Kelvin. Okay, so this is the thing yang kamu kena tahu kalau nak convert pressure. Eh, sorry, temperature. Uh, next, sama juga dengan question number 8. Convert 253 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So this is the other way around. 253 Celsius mana dia? So 253 degrees Celsius is how many Kelvin? So right back, Kelvin equals to degree Celsius tambah dengan 273. So if we have 253, tulis balik dalam this equation. Uh, tambah dengan 273, dapatlah uh, 523. That's not the, this is not the other way around my bad. Okay, jawapannya adalah 526. Oh my bad, 526. Okay, 526. Uh, converting grams to milligram. Okay, nak convert mass. So, okay, so ni kamu kena tahu juga dia punya conversion factor. 648 gram, berapa milligram? So most of you got it right. 648. Why? Because the conversion factor of gram to milligram adalah 1001 gram bersamaan dengan 1000 milligram. So it's, uh, kalau kita ada berapa tadi? 648. 648 gram equals to how many milligram? So it's easy now that you can see because the number adalah 1 dengan 1000. So kamu darab adalah 648 dengan 1000 kan? Okay, because that's the conversion factor. Darab dengan 1000. So kalau satu nak jadi 1000, kena darab dengan 1000. 648 nak jadi X ni berapa? So we multiply with 1000. That's the conversion factor. Tapi if you want to be careful, kamu boleh buat cara macam saya advise tadi. 1 gram divided by 1000 milligram equals to 648 gram divided by X milligram. So solve for X. X milligram equals to 648 gram uh, darab dengan 1000 milligram divided by 1000 gram. So ini uh, cancer gram 648 darab dengan 1000 darab dapatlah 648. Okay, the concept is the same. Uh, next question, how does a solution become super saturated? So now we are moving from uh, measurements, kita go into solution. Okay, so you have to remember solution, uh, we have three types of solutions yang kita discuss dalam this chapter. Uh, saturated, super saturated and unsaturated. So in this question, dia tanya, how does a solution become super saturated? So you have to understand, you have to faham, kamu kena tahu, what does uh, super saturated means? So super saturated means a solution that contains more solute than it could have dissolved without the help of external force. Macam external force in this case, saya maksudkan macam uh, increase in temperature ataupun increase in pressure. For example, kalau macam air milo, uh, after you dah kacau seberapa lama mana pun, akan ada timbul balik powder dekat atas layer of the solution. So ada sebut yang tak mau dissolve. So kamu masukkan that cup of air milo dalam microwave, you heat it up. So after you took it out, the powder at the top of the air milo akan dissolve. So that is an example of super saturated solution. So that's why the answer untuk soalan nombor 10 ni, it dissolves more solute than you should be able to. So at room temperature, Uh, bila kita kacau air milu yang sedang contoh saya bagi tu, ada, ada sebahagian serbuk milu yang tidak larut. So in order to make it dissolve, 
kita masukkan dalam microwave, kita panaskan dia. So the external force in this case, the heat akan help the solution to dissolve the undissolved serbuk ni. Okay, that is super saturated solution. Uh, half of you got it right, but I don't like uh, 20. Uh, okay, so dissolve lots of solute in it, that's not accurate. Dissolve a little solute in it, that's wrong, that is unsaturated. Uh, D, dissolve a solvent in it, so that's not, that's not possible. A solvent is doing the dissolving. Okay, solute adalah bahan yang akan dilarutkan. So kalau if still if you if you are confused by the terms kamu tak tahu solute tu apa solvent tu apa solution tu apa ingat contoh saya uh, saya samakan benda-benda ni dengan proses membancuh air nilo. Okay, kamu ada serbuk nilo, kamu ada air panas, you mix them up kamu akan dapat air nilo. So in this case, serbuk milo ni adalah solute. Benda ni dia akan dilarutkan. Air panas adalah solvent. Ini adalah pelarut. Air panas akan melarutkan serbuk milo. And air milo is the solution. Solution is a mixture of solute and solvent. So remember proses bancuh air milo, you should be able to differentiate the terms. Okay, solute tu apa, solvent tu apa, solution tu apa. Uh, question what next? Uh, question 11. Solution where more solute can still be dissolved at a given temperature. Ah, okay. So what, what's the definition untuk uh, situasi ini? A solution where more solute can still be dissolved at a given temperature. So ramai salah kat sini, saya rasa kamu tak faham soalan tu. Macam, sama macam saya get confused just now. Maybe I should like word this question better. Okay. So dalam soalan nombor 11 ni, saya tanya What is the definition of a solution where more solute can be dissolved? Okay, so contohnya Kamu ada, saya ada satu mark air milo Okay, we have mark, katakanlah saya bubur just uh, one tablespoon one tablespoon of milo in here, serbuk milo. So, kita, kalau kamu pernah buat air milo dengan satu sudu saja serbuk milo, kamu akan dapati air milo tu tak pakat. Semua setuju kan? So, that means kita boleh tambah lagi more serbuk milo. More tablespoon of milo in here dan kita boleh kacau and dia akan larut. So, asalnya initially, air milo dengan satu tablespoon ni adalah Unsaturated solution Sebab dia masih boleh larutkan extra tablespoon of serbuk milo Okay, kalau solution tu masih lagi ada kebolehan untuk larutkan more solute Dia adalah unsaturated Okay, itu adalah definition unsaturated solution uh, Next one, describe a solute uh, jawapan yang betul adalah it gets dissolved. Okay, bahan yang akan dilarutkan. Kenapa A salah? A, part of solution present in largest amount. Part, part of solution present, that's not true. I, I also get confused with the, with the sentence. Part of solution present in largest amount. Okay, so that's not the definition of a solute. Uh, water is not a solute. Okay, water is known as a universal solvent, bahan pelarut universal. Okay, it, it dissolves most, mostly most things. Uh, these rounds and breaks apart. Okay, that is not best description of a solvent also. So, jawapan yang paling tepat di sini adalah it gets dissolved. Mana-mana saja bahan yang boleh dilarutkan, dia adalah sejenis solute. Next one, when a solvent contains as much of the solute as it can hold, the solution is best and the solution is said to be saturated. Okay, kat sini dalam ayat ni saya cakap when a solvent contains as much, okay, dia, 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 dah, dia dah larutkan sebanyak mungkin solute yang dia boleh buat. 
dia boleh larutkan so dia dah tepu dah okay that's why the definition of word saturated here is tepu dia tak boleh larut more than that anymore okay so that is the definition of a saturated solution when it dissolves the most solute that it could have yeah super saturated salah super saturated means it could dissolve it could dissolve more than it could have uh, diluted pun salah diluted means kita cairkan sesuatu larutan and unsaturated meaning dia boleh larutkan lebih banyak lagi okay so you have to be careful with the wording of the the inilah of the statement of the questions to make sure you understand Uh, number 14, you can make a solution more concentrated by adding what? So if you understood the definition of the terms, you should be able to understand this. So jawapannya adalah solute. Okay, so kalau solution tu uh, tak concentrated lagi, uh, kalau kita nak tambah keperkataan sesuatu larutan tu, kita boleh darutkan lebih banyak lagi bahan dalam larutan tersebut. Kalau kamu nak air milo yang lagi kau, kamu tambah lagi lagi banyak serbuk milo. Kalau kamu nak uh, air tu lagi manis, kamu tambah lagi beberapa sudu gula. That is increasing the concentration. Kamu tambah kepekatan sesuatu uh, larutan tersebut by adding more solute. Okay, so the, the more concentrated the solution is, the more molecules of solute dissolve in the solvent. Uh, question number 15, convert this number to a standard notation. So 60% got it right. Uh, so macam mana nak convert this? 7.1 darat 10 kuasa 4. So dekat sini saya nak clarify apakah itu standard dengan scientific notation. So standard notation dan juga scientific no so what are these two terms what do they mean so standard notation here means the way we express numbers okay so notation in this case how do we express numbers so kita ada dua cara untuk express numbers here standard and scientific So standard is the regular way that we express numbers satu dua sepuluh ribu satu juta. Okay, ini adalah standard uh, notation, the, the regular way, the usual way that we use to express numbers. Scientific notation, we you, we shorten the writing of the numbers. Uh, excuse me. Oh, okay. Sorry, kapan kamu one of your friends uh, apologize tak boleh masuk kelas. Uh, mana tadi? Okay, scientific notation. We we uh, what's the word? Kita pendekkan cara kita tulis number. Okay, because in scientific calculations, usually we are dealing with a very 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 large number, ataupun a very 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 small number. So contohnya kalau kita calculate Uh, a concentration of a solution, it could be like uh, kita, bila kita calculate the concentration of a solution, meaning kita calculate the amount of molecules, the amount of atoms dissolved in a solvent. And this could be like up to the millions, up to the billions. So katakanlah dalam satu gelas air milo tu ada uh, 10 juta serbuk, molecule serbuk milo. So instead of writing 10 juta like this, because kita nak perform calculations, big calculations, kita we want to be efficient. So we write in scientific notation. Kita tulis dalam bentuk singkatan. So 1.0 darab 10 kuasa, wait a minute, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 
uh, kita boleh tulis eh, sorry my bad katakanlah the size of the molecules of serbuk nilo adalah 0.000 sangat sangat kecil okey 0.0001 like this so instead of writing nombor penuh dengan titik perpuluh uh, sorry uh, decimal figures like this kita boleh tulis 1.0 darab 10 kuasa 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 negatif 9 so this is scientific notation this is scientific notation this is standard notation okay clear this is a revision so pada soalan tadi dia tanya dia suruh kamu convert this value to standard notation maksudnya dia suruh kamu kembangkan okay so how do we know macam mana nak kembangkan uh, ke kanan ke ke kiri kamu tengok 10 kuasa ni kalau the value of 10 kuasa ni adalah positif macam this case 10 kuasa 4 that's a positive value kalau positif kita kembang ke arah kanan ok you can do this 10 kuasa apa tadi 10 kuasa 7.1 darab 10 kuasa 4 so kalau 7.1 darab 10 kuasa 4 kamu tarik yang titik bulan ni sebanyak uh, 4 kali ke belah kanan so 1 2 3 4 so 7 1 kosong 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 that's the value okay. so that's the answer adalah uh, uh, oh, mana jawapan? Ah, 71 ribu ok, kalau 10 ni 10 kuasa ni adalah negatif kamu ke, kamu kembang ke belah kiri kalau 7.1 darab 10 kuasa negatif 4 so if the value here is negative kamu go to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the standard notation adalah 0.0007. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the titik bulan drop here. Okay, so this is the standard notation kalau kuasa dia negatif. That's all to it. Itu sahaja. Kamu kena tengok kat 10 kuasa ni the positive or negative. Okay, moving on. Moving on, uh, oh, uh, answers. Question number 16, uh, convert this number into scientific notation. Sama juga macam tadi. Okay, kamu, uh, kalau kamu nak convert from uh, standard notation to scientific notation, kamu kena jadikan figure, kamu kena jadikan nombor itu dalam, uh, uh, what's the word? As an integer, meaning the dalam value, satu nombor di depan dan titik perpuluhan ok so kalau 0.068 nak convert to scientific notation 0.068 that mean kamu hanya perlu bawa titik perpuluhan ni go sit right next to uh, this sebelah ni so satu dan dua jadilah 6.8 darab 10 kuasa negatif dua So ada ada one of your seniors tanya saya dulu kenapa tak bawa pergi ke sebelah lapan? Because that's not an integer. Kalau kamu bawa ke sebelah lapan macam ni, that means dia akan jadi uh, dia akan jadi uh, 6, 8 uh, darab 10 kuasa negatif 3. So 68 ni that, bukan integer lah. Kamu kena bawa dia jadi uh, uh, 6, uh, kena jadi uh, number and then titik perpuluhan I forgot what this is called ni kena bagi jadi dia satu titik perpuluhan ok, tak boleh jadi nombor genap like this ok, so that's why kamu kena bawa sub stop dekat 6 alright, that's the, that's the, that's the rule Okay, moving on. Dah nak pukul tiga dah. Saya cakap sorang-sorang dah. Uh, 17, convert this number into scientific notation. So, once again, this is similar. Cuma, this is a bigger number. Nak jadikan scientific notation. So, 950,000. 950,000. So, nak jadi scientific notation. Again, kamu bagi jadi the... Uh, dua titik perpuluhan, satu titik perpuluhan so it, this is where the titik perpuluhan is satu, dua, tiga, empat dan lima 
So 9.5 darab 10 kuasa 5 kan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 kuasa. Okay. Kalau kamu nak verify, kalau kamu nak check whether you doing it right or not, kamu kembangkan balik this value. So kalau 10 kuasa 5, if this is positive, then this titik pula you go to the right. So kalau kembangkan itu the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it goes back to this lah. Okay, you can verify your calculations. Uh, ini pun sama, okay, sama saja uh, conversion tadi, you work whether it's uh, to the left or to the right. Question 19, choose the correct classification for this substance. Neon gas, what is it? So the answer adalah element. In neon gas, it's a, a signus noble gas. So dia tidak bercampur dengan any other element, any other atoms or any other molecules. So it is made up of only neon. So kalau sesuatu bahan tu terdiri daripada satu elemen, satu atom sahaja, bukan satu, sejenis. Okay, atom saya adalah sejenis. In this case, uh, neon gas ni is made up of neon atoms only. So that's why dia adalah sejenis elemen. Question 20. Choose the correct classification of Panadol tablet. So what is Panadol tablet? Dia adalah sejenis homogeneous mixture. So Panadol tablet adalah sebiji tablet. Untuk buat sebiji Panadol tablet tu, kita combine multiple ingredients. Sama lah macam kita buat cake. Okay, if you are making a cake, you add tepung, telur, sugar, baking powder, salt, whatever else things you put in a cake. So when you make up a cake and you mix them up, you bake them and it comes out homogeneous. It looks like it's one thing. So that's why it's called homogeneous. All are uh, sebati. Okay, semua ingredient tu dicampur dengan sebati. Okay, that's why uh, Panadol tablet tu adalah bahan yang sebati, uh, campuran sebati, homogeneous mixture. Uh, so nak tanya, yeah. Yeah. Uh, semua tablet memang homogeneous mixture ke? Semua tablet adalah homogeneous mixture. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, an example, uh, non-homogeneous mixture, uh, contohnya macam uh, chocolate chip cookies. Okay, so in chocolate chip cookies, uh, you can see that uh, the the batter jadi the, the the cookie, tapi ada chocolate chip, biji-biji chocolate chip timbul. So the, the campuran itu tidak sebati. Okay, another example of larutan tak sebati adalah, uh, apa lagi example makanan? Uh, uh, air dengan minyak, that's very easy. Kamu nampak tak sebati kan? Apa yang tricky? Uh, that's what I can think of right now. If you add, uh, macam baru saya baru makan mi sup tadi. So dalam mi sup saya tadi ada mi, ada ayam, ada sayur. So they are all mixed tapi tidak sebati. Okay, larutan sebati, contohnya macam air pipe. Okay, you can see one thing only, kamu nampak air. Tapi dalam air tu ada many more things. Ada chlorine yang dilarutkan, ada bahan chemical yang dicampur untuk bunuh uh, pathogens, bacteria, uh, air sungai, air laut. Itu adalah homogeneous mixture. Okay? Alright, question 21. Given the mass of a soap, so this is a calculation question. Given the mass of a soap is 150 grams and its volume is 222, calculate its density to three significant figures. So, kat sini ramai salah. So, a quarter of you got it right. A quarter jawab 0.6840. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. Ada one of your friends correct saya hari tu pasal question ni. Okay, so kat sini saya tanya three significant as a bagi requirement kat sini kan. But jawab dalam three significant figures. So first kita dapat dulu calculation. Okay, macam mana nak convert this value jadi density. So untuk cari density, kamu kena darab, eh sorry, bahagikan density equals to mass over volume. So in this case, the mass adalah uh, 150 divided by 222. So 150. Uh, divided by 222 uh, gram per mil. Okay, so what you will get here adalah saya buka calculator dekat sini. 
150 divided by 22 So what you will get adalah 0.67567 Saya ambil 5 titik perkuluhan 0.67567 Okay Kamu akan dapat 0.67567 Milligram per Sorry, gram per mil Gram Okay, so now the second part of the question Dia nak jawapan, the final answer in three significant figures So you start counting from the left Okay, zero uh, on the left hand side adalah tidak significant Okay, so this is not significant And then kita jumpa six, so this is significant So move on to the next one, seven also significant Five is also significant So these three Adalah the three significant figures yang kita mahu Sekarang kita kena bundarkan dia So tengok this value here Sebelah lima ni adalah enam So kita kena bundarkan lima ni jadi uh, Jadi enam So jawapannya adalah 0.6760 gram per year So this was my mistake You let one of your friends correct me Correct me Dia kata Eh sorry, my bad. Uh, betul lah salah. Saya ingatkan jawapan ini tadi, jawapan 676 kan. So that's why ramai orang jawab kat sini, tapi kamu dapat, uh, apa nama, kamu dipangkah kata salah. So jawapan yang betul adalah C, 0.6766. Okay, so saya silap set, saya silap tekan, saya kata jawapan yang betul adalah E. Alright, so this is how you actually do it. So the most of you got it right at sini, one third of you got it right, selebihnya dia orang salah. So this is the process. Kamu bahagikan 150 dengan 22, uh, 222 and then count the significant figures which is C and then bundarkan. That's why jawapannya adalah C, 67, point number. Uh, next one, uh, 7.82 is an example of scientific notation. Uh, the exponent of the negative 6 tells you your number will be very small to very large. So, if the indicator is negative, maksudnya number tu akan jadi sangat-sangat kecil. So, how do you know? Kamu boleh expand this value, 7.82. So, take it to the left. So, actually the value here adalah, kalau, kalau baca ada adalah meter, okay? If you want to imagine, 7.82 darab 10 kosa negatif 6 meter. That's the unit. Kamu tahu satu meter panjang mana kan? Katakanlah satu depan tangan kamu. So sekarang kalau dia punya notation kat sini, scientific notation adalah 10 kosa negatif 6. That means, this value ke bawah to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So kosong, poin, kosong, 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 tujuh, kapan dua meter. Sangat kecil. Okay, 10,000 kali ganda lebih kecil daripada meter. So that's why uh, kalau kita notationnya adalah negative, it is indicating a small value. Okay, that's it for chapter one assessment. So you all, uh, bukan you all lah, by, by, uh, saya bagi bonus mark lah. Kita boleh smart, mana lah soalan tadi yang saya silap tu Ah, ini semua Bagi 3, 19 participle yang salah, uh, yang ditanda salah ni akan dapat jawapan betul lah So, don't worry, saya akan manually grade Saya boleh tahu participle mana yang jawab betul ataupun salah On options yang dia bagi kat sini Okay, so I can see each of you jawab mana satu betul yang satu salah Okay, so uh, uh, sepatutnya saya ada meeting pukul 3 uh, before I go, I want to uh, cerita something because I was several person saya tak uh, in your chapter one I tak expand dengan sangat lanjut about light okay about spectrum and saya terasa nak cerita hari ini because uh, saya sepanjang minggu ni saya ada class dengan your seniors your final our final year students and one of the uh, topic adalah spectroscopy an instrument yang kita guna dalam makmal in chemistry lab untuk measure the amount of light absorbed by certain substances. So dalam uh, dalam masa saya nak ajar that topic, ajar that uh, course, uh, saya dapati macam most of the 
students uh, have a very weak understanding of what light is. So saya pun bila saya nak cerita balik, I find uh, I struggle to explain what is light. So kamu rasa kamu tahu tak what is light? Can you kamu boleh bercerit, kamu boleh can you tell uh, like five minute, ten minute story what light is? Dalam like chapter one kita ada a subtopic about what light is spectrum, electromagnetic radiation spectrum EMR. So in this EMR electromagnetic spectrum ni, it basically klasifikasikan uh, jenis-jenis cahaya. Okay, because dalam spectroscopy, the instrument yang kita guna untuk perform spectroscopy itu, uh, dia dia boleh ukur berapa banyak cahaya yang diserap dan dipancarkan. So, mas masa saya nak explain this to your seniors, to the students, uh, I have to use terms like wavelengths, uh, frequency, the absorbance. So, saya dah, saya, I find myself having to explain balik this topic. Okay, because most of them belajar ni masa first year. So, that's understandable lah. Masa saya student dulu pun, whatever I learn in my first year, I forgot by the next semester. That's I, that, that one I understand. Tetapi, masa saya nak refresh balik, masa saya nak belajar balik, I, I watch YouTube videos lah. Uh, nak refresh balik macam mana, saya boleh explain this topic so that students boleh find it easy to understand. So basically, light, the light that you can see, how can a human person see something adalah because that object that we are looking at memantulkan cahaya. So I can see this mouse that I'm holding here is because the sunlight from the sun falls on the mouse and the mouse akan pantulkan cahaya into my eyes. That's how I see this mouse. That's how I can see the laptop, the objects around me. That how, that's how I can see a person. Okay, so everything, every matter boleh menyerap dan memancarkan cahaya. Okay, so there's this thing called different type of light. Kita ada gamma ray, x-ray, UV, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwave and radio. So what differentiates between these different types of light adalah dia punya wavelength. So this is the part yang saya dapati. Uh, bukan takut students uh, yang lost. Sometimes saya pun bila saya nak cerita balik, I find myself struggle nak explain what is wavelength. So, kalau kamu belajar SPM, physics SPM, kamu dah go over this, what is a wavelength. So, dalam this diagram, dia tunjuk this uh, lukisan macam cacing ni. Okay, so this is a wave because light adalah, walaupun dia adalah sejenis cahaya, tetapi it moves, dia bergerak dalam bentuk gelombang. Okay, so cahaya adalah sejenis tenaga yang bergerak dalam bentuk gelombang. So, that's why dia ada different wavelength because kalau cahaya tu bertenaga tinggi dia punya gelombang akan jadi lebih pendek kalau cahaya itu bertenaga rendah dia punya gelombang akan jadi lebih panjang so apa yang gelombang panjang yang pendek ni so you can see from this drawing the other uh, if you follow my cursor my mouse here they start from the left so we start from this top here that can go down the wave go down and then they can go up they can go down and go up. So we measure a wavelength from the top of this wave, the top of the crest to the top of another crest next to it. So that's the wavelength. That's the, that's how we measure wavelength. Panjang sesuatu gelombang. So lebih panjang sesuatu gelombang tu lebih rendah tenaga dia. The shorter the distance, the higher the energy. Can you imagine macam uh, Kalau kamu ambil satu, kamu tadah satu air, satu air pula. Kamu tadah, kamu ambil satu besen, satu mangkuk, kamu isi dia penuh dengan air. Kemudian kamu tumbuk, you, uh, kamu tumbuk ataupun kamu ketuk air itu laju-laju. So gelombang yang dia akan dihasilkan, uh, kamu akan nampak ripple tu very close to each other. Ini disebabkan kamu apply a lot of energy. Okay, kamu kamu pukul air tu laju-laju, gelombang dia akan hasilkan banyak and the, the distance between each gelombang sangat dekat. Because the energy is dispersed, is very high. Tapi kalau kamu just tap very slowly, the gelombang akan ripple very slowly and the distance between each gelombang is further apart. 
Itu disebabkan tenaga yang dikenakan pada permukaan air itu adalah sangat rendah. Okay, that's the relationship antara wavelength dengan energy. And that is why ada certain part of light kita tak boleh nampak. Okay, the human eyes have evolved so that we can see a certain amount of light sahaja. So for example, uh, the, the, the eyes yang kita terima yang membolehkan kita nampak adalah spectrum visible here. This is the amount of energy yang paling tinggi yang boleh diterima oleh mata kita. So kalau kita, the wavelength is a bit shorter than visible light, contohnya macam ultraviolet, kita tak nampak. That's why we cannot see anything lower than visible. Ultraviolet kita tak nampak, X-ray we don't see, gamma ray we don't see. Kalau kita go a bit further, a bit longer than visible, infrared, microwave dan radio, kita tak nampak juga. Okay, so this is what uh, saya nak students tahu tentang cahaya. Okay, so wavelength and energy berkait rapat. Lagi tinggi sesuatu tenaga cahaya itu, lebih pendek wavelength. Okay, panjang gelombang. The lower the energy, the longer the wavelength. Okay, so uh, I think that's my my latest finding that I found interesting lah. Saya rasa kita uh, took for granted, I guess. Okay, because this is basically how we see things. We learn about this uh, since it's SPM and then kita tak nampak the application. Tapi as a pharmacy student, I just can just realize. I find that the, kita belajar ni in the first year, tapi kita apply it in the final year in the sixth semester uh, dalam topik uh, spectroscopy yang saya terang tadi tu. Okay, your senior belajar tapi dah lupa dah ada the theory. Tapi bila nak apply, you don't remember, so then you you you're confused in your third year. Okay, so I I hope that maybe later on in the future, in the next classes, I will expand. I can give example on the video lagi tadi. Alright, so uh, thank you. Saya tak sempat nak discuss about parts of an atom. Uh, dalam chapter 2 kita ada uh, beberapa subtopik lagi kita perlu kita belum discuss macam mana nak uh, macam mana nak calculate the number of electrons, neutrons and protons, macam mana nak calculate uh, molecular molecular weight, uh, apa lagi molecular formula. Okay, so kita akan go over that. Nanti saya akan bagi homework dulu and then kita akan discuss and saya boleh expand further dalam next class. Alright, so dah saya tengok kat sini, part seven atom pun ramai lagi belum buat. Uh, cohort uh, 19, eh sorry, cohort 18 baru buat uh, 9 orang, cohort 42 baru buat 7 orang. So, granted saya baru bagi 2 hari lepas. But hopefully next week boleh siap lah so that kita boleh discuss. Alright, everyone clear? Okay. Yeah. Alright, uh, attendance jangan lupa Last wrap, please make sure everyone uh, had a link for attendance. Thank you all. Okay, sir. Bye bye. Thank okay, you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Terima kasih. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.